Okay, so we'll go back to another video. So here we have a infinite sum of, a, of the squares of, of harmonic numbers and then all that being divided by 2 to the power n. So I believe that this is the third video in um, everything that I cover in math videos so far that have tackled um, a harmonic number series. And I believe all this is the third one specifically. All the others are all infinite sums as well. This one's a very interesting one as um, the way we want to, you know, you know, evaluate the series to this is we actually want to start off by finding, you know, a little just um, call a little series. If anything, we're treating this as like we're um, writing as a, you know, generating function, find what that close form of that generating function is. There's also a bunch of other properties we will be using um, in terms of re-indexing some um, special value. There's actually one special value that will be used like but it won't come to all the way to the end. Some other definitions of specific will be actually applying the dialog rhythm um, to this um, procedure over here. And um, if you notice, and you'll notice that once as we proceed forward, we're actually gonna be using yet another generating function, but specifically for harmonic numbers itself. So a lot of things to play around with that we're gonna actually be utilizing and it's gonna be a lot of fun here. So why don't we just jump right in? So as we know, harmonic numbers, h sub n is basically a way of expressing numbers of the harmonic series. So the infinite sum from n is equal to 1 of 1 over n. Well, it can't be 0, obviously, at n equals 0, since that would be, you know, um, undefined. But um, using that definition, well, that's just the way to look at things that way. So let's actually start off with specifically the series, and this is the generating function for the squares of harmonic numbers. We want to consider the series um, h sub n square of x to the power n. And of course, this is going to be for um, our ratio for the absolute value of x is going to be strictly less than 1 for this to apply. Let's actually use the recurrence relation and say that the harmonic number um, h sub n is equal to h sub n plus 1. Then we subtract this with 1 divided by n plus 1. It, there's not really no proof behind this. You can actually just see by definition, if you plug um, each of the numbers one at a time, you can actually just write the relationship, the, cur the recurrence relation to this that we can actually um, utilize from here. With this, let's actually put this back into our, you know, series that we want to, that we were considering. So that means um, the following, the infinite sum, n is equal one h sub n square of x to the power n is going to equal to, um, okay, so just the series notation again, then put, then fill in that substitution, say that this is h sub n plus one, um, subtract one divided by n plus one, then square, then multiply by x to the power n. Okay, so let's actually expand what's in the parentheses. So of course we'll have to apply, you know, the FOIL method. But that says that if we expand this out, and I'm also gonna apply some linearity too, so I'll actually split this as a sum of, you know, a sum a addition slash difference of, you know, sums. So we'll have first is um, the infinite sum n is equal one of h sub n plus one squared, then multiply with x sub n, just multiplying, just distributing. And if we do this twice, so that means we're going to get two times. So two times the infinite sum, n is equal one of h sub n plus one, then times x to the power n, all divided by n plus one. And then add this with the infinite sum from n is equal to one of x to the power n, n divided by um, n plus one, and then quantity squared. Now let's actually do a little bit of re-indexing. So um, I'm going to change this so that our um, starting index is going to start at n is equal to 2 for all these sums over here. And so with this, now we will have that this is going to be h sub um, n squared, then, the, then multiply by x to the power n subtract 1, um, subtract 2 times the infinite sum, starting at n is equal to 2 of um, h sub n, then multiply by x to the power n subtract 1, all divided by n, okay? And now let's add this with the infinite sum from um, starting with n is equal to 2 of x to the power n subtract 1 and then divided by n squared. Looks like we can't do much, but now let's actually fix this up and say that now we can put this, now we can write this as um, the infinite sum of the same thing. Actually, n is going to equal 1, um, h sub n plus 1, then h sub n, just n, and then square, then um, x to the power n minus one. It's just following this. It's just basically the same um, same infinite series, just like, as I just written, but except this is going to start at um, the index as n is equal to one. And I'll explain to that justification once I um, finish writing all this out. So now that everything's out, now you might be thinking, you might be questioning your own sanity, thinking, why did we just change the index from two then to one of that same series? That doesn't make sense. You can't just do stuff like that. 
You'll notice that um, if I were to plug in n is equal to 1, so that means this is h sub 1 square, which h sub 1 is just equal to 1 because it's 1 over 1, then um, 1 minus 0 is, so x to the power of 0 is 1, so that's going to be 1 here. You do, the, you do the evaluation over here, so this is actually going to be 1 over here, and if you do the evaluation over here, then you're going to get that this is just equal to 1. So what that means is that we have a 1 minus 2 times 1, which is 1 minus 2 is negative 1, and then add this with 1, which is 0, which indeed, you're adding a 0 term, which actually preserves that same equality. So in other words, these two match the same, but we actually just did a little bit of rewriting, knowing that we know that if we plug n is equal to 1, we get that the, um, the whole thing for here for n, at n equals 1 is going to equal 0. So still the same, we can do this. Um, yeah, I know, it's kind of um, making you question life, doesn't it? <laughs> it's okay. So with this, now let's actually um, move on to um, the next step from here. What I'm going to do here is we're actually going to multiply an x to both sides of the equation. So x to both sides of um, specifically, you know, this entire this this thing right here, or with the expansion. So we have that um, x then multiply the infinite sum at n is equal to one of um, h sub n square or h sub n square. Yeah, and then x to the power n. Then so far we're going to have that's equal to the same thing over here. So um, well, except multiplied x, so now this is actually going to get a new different expression. So first we're going to have h sub n squared, then that's just left down to just x to the power n, then subtract 2, then the infinite sum, n is equal to 1, then h sub n, then same thing, x to the power n, and then divided by n, then uh, multiply with x over here, so this is the infinite sum, n is equal to 1 of x, um, to the power n and divided by n squared. Um, now, if we actually do a little bit of rearrangement, we know that these two share the same, you know, infinite series. So I can actually subtract things to both sides and factor that out. So we'll have uh, x minus one, then multiply by the infinite sum of um, n is equal to one, then h sub n squared, then x to the power n. So let me um, rewrite. Let me. Let me. I'm going to switch these two since I just want the positive to be the leading factor, and then everything else is going to be the same thing. So now we'll notice that um, we can actually use a little definition. So what I, as I mentioned, we're going to be using the die logarithm function, and that says that um, specifically um, li sub of order two of x. So I put this over here. Li then two of x is going to equal this actually this infinite sum over here. So this is the infinite sum n is equal one of x to the power n and then divided by n squared. So this means that we can just replace this with over here. And um, so now that just be re replaced with, let me put this as um, li order two of x. That's nice. And then next, what we're gonna do from here is now note that we need to figure out how to evaluate this sum over here. So let's actually do that. We know that for one, that um, the generating function, so yes, this is actually gonna be um, the next step here. The generating function of the harmonic numbers h sub n of x to the power n is going to equal negative ln of 1 minus x and then divided by uh, 1 minus x. And of course, this is for the equality that x is strictly less than 1. So with this, now we can actually um, do a little bit of computation and fix some stuff from here. So with this, let's go back to um, now that we just show over here, that's what we're going to do. So let's actually take a little bit of an observation and see that the following for um, the infinite sum, I'm going to put a star over here infinite sum of n is equal 1 of h sub n, then x to the power n divided by n. We, that, that can actually be written in the form of an integral from 0 to x of the, of course, the infinite sum of n is equal 1 of h sub n, and then t to the power n minus 1, and then dt. And so from here, what we can do is now with that generating function, we'll just replace this back. So now we're going to have the following. So we have the integral from 0 to x of ln of 1 minus t, and then divided by uh, t, then multiplied by 1 minus t dt, okay? Then we can actually split this up by, um, after applying some partial fraction decomposition and some linearity, we'll have um, a difference of two integrals. So we'll have negative, um, the integral from 0 to x of ln of 1 minus t, and then divided by uh, t dt. Then we subtract this with the integral from 0 to x of um, ln of 1 minus t and then divided by uh, 1 minus t and dt. I'm going to skip the calculations for this step because this is actually um, easy to calculate. All you have to do is actually just perform u substitution twice and then you're going to get the result that I'm about to write down next, which um, 
And then also another thing is that by the integral definition of um, the integral definition of the Dye logarithm, this is actually also written as um, Li order two of x. So we can now we can just replace this. Um, let me actually fix that writing just a little bit better. So from that, let's actually now um, put in everything back in. So um, so therefore now um, going back to here. So we have that the um, the infinite sum n is equal to one of h sub n and then x to the power n divided by n. We have that this is just the dilogarithm at order two or li at order two of x. And then add this with, so this is actually the value of this integral over here that we calculated, and that's going to be uh, ln square of 1 minus x, and then divided by 2. Okay, and so from here, now we can actually just go back to the original where we set that over here. So we have that um, x minus 1, then the infinite sum, n is equal 1 of h sub n, and then square, sorry, um, to the power n is of course going to equal the um, li2 of x. And then um, now this is going to be, I'm gonna move on to the next line. So subtract two times and then fill in this gap over here, um, li uh, order two of x and add this with ln square of one minus x, then divided by two. So with this, now I can actually just divide x minus one to both sides, but let me actually interchange that. So at least it fits. And what that also means that that means the signs will change too. So I'll have that li2 of x minus this. That's going to be negative 1 or negative 1 times this. But then, you know, interchange that so we get a positive. And so now we'll have that so far. This is going to equal. Um, so let me actually put this as what we have. In the sum n is equal 1 of h square n of x to the power n is going to equal um, the dilogarithm of x and then divided by one minus x, um, then add this with ln square of one minus x and divided by one minus x. Okay, so in general, we found a little close form um, of the generating function of the square of harmonic numbers, which is actually going to equal um, this following over here. So now let's suppose that if we were to plug x equals one half, and that also that would say that that's actually what we want to solve for. So x is equal to one. Let x equals one half. And so therefore, this is actually just going to give us what we want. And so therefore, the right hand side, what we have is that this is going to be um, two times li uh, two of uh, one half, and then add this with two times ln squared two. You just perform all the algebra after plugging all this back in. So now. What does this mean? How do we evaluate this? This is the special value and I'm not really gonna, I'm gonna save you all the trouble and um, leave that as, uh, um, well not really save you all the trouble, I'm gonna leave that as an exercise. That's like saying that I have to evaluate this for you guys, but I'll save that for another video if I, um, if I can. What that says is that this value of the dilogarithm of one half is going to equal to pi squared divided by 12, subtract ln squared two divided by two. And so therefore our, um, our infinite sum, so our given n is equal one of h of n squared divided by two to the power n is going to equal to, so you just um, replace this for the value. And then after performing all that calculation and simplification, we're gonna have that the final answer is gonna equal pi squared divided by six, then add this with ln squared of two. And just like that, that is the, um, I got the marker. Um, that is the final answer to this um, harmonic number infinite sum um, valuation, which is actually nice. And um, yeah, a lot of things coming on over here. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.